Hello, everyone, and welcome to another short video on our own devices. I'm Jean Massy, and the other day I was at a thrift store when I came across this item. This is a Polaroid SX70 Alpha SE camera. And in my series on Polaroid cameras that I published a few months ago, I stated that if I came across any other Polaroid variants that I didn't cover in that series, then I would feature them in their own separate videos. And so that is what we are going to be doing today. Now, as I covered in that series, the SX-70 was first released in 1972 and was the first Polaroid camera to use integral film, which is automatically ejected from the camera and develops on its own without any further input from the photographer. Yet, while this was a revolutionary and iconic piece of consumer technology, it was also expensive, retailing for $180 or around $1,300 in today's money. And as a result, the initial sales fell far short of Polaroid's expectations. Also, the early SX-70s were plagued by various technical difficulties, and together this forced Polaroid to make a number of modifications to make the SX-70 more user-friendly, reliable, and affordable. For example, the very first SX-70s didn't have any sort of focusing aid in the viewfinder. You had to figure out the focus by eye. And this is because Polaroid founder Edwin Land thought that this would distract from the user experience. He wanted to make photography as straightforward and intuitive a process as possible. However, this system proved very difficult to use, especially in low lighting conditions. So in 1973, Land grudgingly agreed to add a split circle rangefinder to the viewfinder, though on one condition, which is that it not be placed in the center of the view. And that in itself caused its own problems because people tended to use the rangefinder as an aiming reticle, leading to a lot of cutoff heads and other framing mishaps. Also, the earlier SX-70s had only plain graduations on the bezel of the lens, while the later models introduced numbers to give you the actual focusing range. However, none of those modifications did anything to reduce the price of the camera. So in 1974, the company released the Model 2, which ditched the chrome plating of the earlier versions for either white or black plastic, and this retailed for $149.95. And then in 1975, the company released what is probably the most maligned of the early SX-70 variants, the Model 3, which eliminated the complex SLR mechanism and replaced it with a regular viewfinder integrated into the old hood. And while this modification succeeded in reducing the price of the camera to $99.95, it also made it rather difficult to focus. And really, it wouldn't be until 1977 that Polaroid finally succeeded in producing a truly affordable and popular integral film camera, which was the one step like this one. And what they ended up doing was eliminating the major feature that made the original SX-70 so complicated and expensive, which was the folding body and the attendant optics while retaining all of the successful elements of the integral film system. This resulted in a camera that cost only $39.95 and became the smash hit of the 1977 holiday season. Despite this, Polaroid continued to produce the SX-70 as more of a premium product line, and in 1977, they released an upgraded version called the Alpha 1. And the main external differences with the Alpha 1 are the inclusion of two lugs at the back for a neck strap, and a threaded well at the bottom for tripod mounting. Previously, an SX-70 could only be mounted on a tripod using a special clip-on adapter known as the number 111 mount. Internally, slight modifications were made to the latching mechanism on the film loading door, as well as to the ejection system to prevent the door from randomly opening up, and the ejection motor from running away, two problems that had plagued the first model SX-70s. And finally, the circuit board controlling the exposure system was modified to allow the use of fill flash in brightly lit conditions. Now, this particular example, the Alpha SE, or Special Edition, is merely a cosmetic variation of the Alpha 1, replacing the chrome finish with black plastic, the red shutter button with a blue one, and the top grain leather of the original SX-70 versions with pretty cheap looking black vinyl. These also came with a five-year extended warranty and a film exchange program where you could turn in eight to ten bad exposures along with a coupon to receive a new package of film. It also came with this carrying case which has a set of leather hinges on the side that allows the entire camera to open up without removing the case, which is kind of neat. 
And there were other cosmetic variations of the Alpha 1, including the executive model, which had a black plastic body and a red shutter button, and various models badged for sale by stores like Kmart, Sears, and Photocapel. Polaroid would continue to produce ever more advanced versions of the folding SX-70 with features like electronic flashes and ultrasonic autofocus, with the last two models, the SLR 680 and 690, being released in 1982. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. I know that a lot of this material was already covered in my previous series on Polaroid cameras, but I thought it would be interesting to take a closer look at one of the many variations of the SX-70 that was produced over the years and to compare and contrast Edwin Land's initial vision of this beautiful and complicated art object of a camera with the realities of the consumer electronics market, which is that people want something that is affordable and just works. And that is the public pressure that Polaroid was eventually forced to cave into, and they had to produce much cheaper and more practical variants of this camera in order to stay afloat. Anyways, I will see you next time in another video where we'll look at yet more cameras and other devices just like this one. Until then, I'm Jean Nessier from Our Own Devices. Have a great day.